He is the king and founder of arguably the greatest kingdom of elves to ever exist. His life would take him through exile, war, and kingship before ending in ruin. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the life and travels of Turgon, King of Gondolin. Turgon is born in Valinor in the years of the Trees 1300, the same year as his cousin Finrod, the older brother of Galadriel. He is born to his father Fingolfin and mother Anaire. He's the second of four children, including his older brother Fingon, younger sister Arathel, and younger brother Argon. At some point during his life in Valinor, Turgon marries Elenwe, and together they have one child, a daughter named Idril. Being a son of Fingolfin, Turgon is the nephew of Feanor, who leads the Noldor into exile. Alongside his father, Turgon would speak against Feanor when he proclaims his dreadful oath. This leads those following Feanor to nearly draw their swords on their kin before Finarfin intervenes. While Turgon was against the Noldor leaving, the majority of the Noldor choose exile, and he follows his father and his people. Despite the fact that he was against the exile, he is not among the elves who turn back after Mandos pronounces his doom upon the Noldor. It is said that Turgon and his older brother Fingon were bold and fiery of heart, and loath to abandon any task to which they had put their hands until the bitter end, if bitter it must be. When Feanor's people burn the ships, instead of sending them back for Fingolfin's followers, Turgon and his family must follow his father across the frozen and perilous Hel Caraxe. Turgon would have one of the most heartbreaking experiences of all the Noldor to make that dreadful journey. One day, his wife Elenwe and daughter Idril fall into the frigid waters. Turgon rushes to save them, but is only able to save Idril. Elenwe is lost. After this great pain, for as long as he lived, Turgon would ever after be hostile to the house of Feanor. Further adding to his loss would be the death of Argon in the Battle of Lamoth the first battle his family would experience in Middle-earth. Having finally arrived in Beleriand, Turgon and his followers settle in the lands of Nevrast, where they build the settlement of Vinyamar. Roughly 50 years after their arrival in Middle-earth, Turgon and Finrod travel together along the river Sirion. As they rest where this river meets the Aros, known as the Mirrors of Twilight, the Vala Ulmo appears to each of them in a dream. His guidance would eventually lead Finrod to found the realm of Nargothrond. As for Turgon, Ulmo would appear to him once again the following year and guide him north up the Sirion to the encircling mountains. There, Turgon would discover the Vale of Tumladen, a hidden valley protected by the unique mountain formation. He then returns to Vinyamar keeping Tumladen a secret over the coming years as he makes plans for a new city. After the Dagor Agrileb in the year 60 of the First Age, when his father Fingolfin and Feanor's son Maithros are victorious against Morgoth, Turgon once again turns his attention to the Valley of Tumladen. He secretly relocates many of the most skilled Noldoran elves to the valley, where they begin building a great city. It is completed in 116 of the First Age and named Gondolin, meaning Hidden Rock. Turgon abandons Vinyamar with all his people, leading them in secret to their new realm, of which Turgon is now king. In Vinyamar, he leaves a sword, armor, and a helm, for Ulmo had given a prophecy that these items would return in an hour of need and deliver hope to Torgon's new city. The elves of Gondolin would continue making it into one of the most incredible places to ever exist in Middle-earth. It is known for its fountains, high white walls, a great tower of the king, and two trees which Torgon himself makes in the image of the deceased Trees of Valinor. The gold tree is called Glingal, meaning hanging flame, and the silver is Belthil, 
meaning divine radiance. One day, Torgon's younger sister, Arathel, leaves Gondolin. Rather than following her brother's recommendation to only visit their brother Fingon, who ruled over Dor Loman and Hithlum, she travels east to Himlad, seeking the sons of Feanor. In a tale covered in greater detail in another video, Arathel would return to Gondolin with a son, Meglin, and followed by her husband, Eol, from whom she had escaped. This would lead to Arathel's tragic death at the hand of her husband, and leave Torgon in sorrow once more. Meglin would be welcomed to stay in the city, and becomes a close counselor of his uncle. In 456 of the First Age, the Great Eagles, who were known to have Eries in the mountains around Gondolin, bring to Torgon the body of his fallen father. Fingolfin had ridden to challenge Morgoth to single combat, and while fighting valiantly, and even wounding the fallen Vala, he would perish in the fight. His body is rescued by the eagles and brought to Torgon city. Torgon would raise a carn over his father's remains upon that very mountaintop overlooking Gondolin. Thus, Torgon's brother Fingon becomes the next High King of the Noldor. In 458, the great eagles would once again bear people to the hidden city. They are the Manish brothers Hurin and Huor, who would become great friends of the king. Turgon would even go so far as to allow them to leave the city a year later, something that was against his own law. It's notable that despite bringing these men to the city, the eagles actually play an important role in the protection and secrecy of the realm. Furthermore, it's in large part due to the fact that Morgoth himself has no forces capable of flight that Gondolin remains hidden from him despite his days of conquest in the north. A few years later in 472, Turgon would be reunited with those same brothers during the Nirnaeth Arnoidiad. While they would rejoice at their meeting in the middle of the battle, the fight would eventually go ill. Fingon is killed by Gothmog, the lord of the Balrogs. With the battle seeming lost, Huor tells Turgon to leave, for as long as Gondolin should stand, Morgoth would know fear. With the eyes of his pending death, Huor prophesies that from him and Turgon, a new star would arise. Huor, Hurin, and their men make a stand at the Fen of Serek, allowing Turgon and his people to flee. Hurin is captured, while Huor and the other men are killed. With Fingon's death, Turgon now becomes the High King of the Noldor. With the help of Círdan the Shipwright, who now lives at the mouths of Sirion, Turgon sends seven boats to Valinor to ask for the help of the Valar, but all seven ships are wrecked. In 495, the lone survivor of these seven ships returns to the Hidden City. Alongside him is a man, Tuor, who is not only the son of Huor, but is also revealed to be wearing the sword and armor which Turgon himself had left in his abandoned city of Vinyamar. Tuor delivers a warning from Ulmo himself, saying the king and his people should abandon Gondolin and flee south to the Havens. However, Turgon had become prideful of his city and ignores the warning of Ulmo. Instead, he locks all seven gates of the city so that no one may enter. During this time, they would only have news of the outside via the Great Eagles. As for Tuor, he remains in the city, where he would fall in love with and marry Turgon's daughter, Idril. For his part, Turgon blessed their union, having held Tuor in high regard, and having never forgotten the dying words of his father, Huor. Meglin was resentful of Tuor, for he coveted Idril. One day when he had left the city, he is captured and brought to Morgoth. Having been promised by Morgoth that he would get both lordship over Gondolin and Idril, Meglin betrays the location of the city to the Dark Lord. In the year 510 of the First Age, Morgoth's force of orcs, balrogs, and dragons attacks the city, just as the elves were preparing to celebrate Midsummer. There are many great deeds among the people of Gondolin during its fall. Deeds of Tuor and Ecthelion and Glorfindel, as for the king, we are told he and his people would fight in defense of his great tower until it fell. 
and mighty was its fall, and the fall of Turgon in its ruin. While Turgon would die with his great city, there would be some among his people that would survive. Tuar, Idril, and their young son, Earendil, would lead the exiles to the mouths of Sirion. And just as Huor had prophesied 70 years prior, a new star would indeed arise from the lines of He and Turgon. For it was Earendil who would sail the skies in the War of Wrath against Morgoth's winged dragons. And after his victory, he would sail the skies forevermore as the star of Earendil a great radiant light that would give hope to many throughout the ages to come. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Listen Me the Cinda, Kella Brimbor, The Mighty Mim, Team Weasel, Rabbi Rob Thomas, Charles Leisure, Toby Mobs Music, CCDC Red Team, Nerd Sigman Anytimer, Pelkey Sports Cards, Mookie the Brown, Christopher Carbaugh, Joe Tepper, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Bertelberg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Michael Wu, Grant McGregor, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.